welcome to episode 108. I am here. I was just hiding behind a sign. Yeah. If you're listening in. So anyway, uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Elevating Business. This is 108 and we've just spent the last what, 15 minutes trying to work out what we're actually going to um, start <laughs> this podcast with. But, oh, we've just been so focused on work the last week, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we have been busy. Just lots so. of work. Um, but yeah, lovely weather to here today, actually. It's lovely um, wintry weather, though. It's sunny, yeah. but it's gone really cold. But I think that, like what we've just talked about, like, you know, if, you, if you're going to have weeks where you're totally focused on work, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you've got to put in some of those hard weeks. And so, um, but make sure you split those up with weeks where you're not so focused on work and you've got some other things yeah. you can do. So. Try going out for some fresh air this morning. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty, pretty cold. cold here at the moment. Yeah. yeah I feel a bit ripped off, actually. <laughs> Why? Well, I was told that uh, moving to the other end of the world, there might be some better weather. Right. So, Emily. I actually didn't think New Zealand ever got really cold, but it really does. Emily comes from the UK and from a place called Manchester. So, if anyone's ever been to Manchester that's listening it's in. A great, it is a great place. You will know that it doesn't stop raining, even yeah. in summer. Yeah. So, what Emily's complaining about New Zealand is completely unfounded. <laughs> Right, and with that, the weather is better, but uh, it, it does still get pretty cold down here. Yeah, it doesn't snow though, so anyway. Right, without further ado, let's get into this one. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking at how to buy a website and how not to get ripped off. Yes, really important. It is really important, and you know, last week we talked about the pros and cons of buying a website versus building a website. So this week we're actually going to talk about buying a website and you know what sort of tips and tricks that we've used when we've bought websites that you can use to avoid getting ripped off um, and making sure you're buying a good investment. Mm -hmm. So the first way to go and buy a website, um, you know, and this is something I would probably promote versus going and buying off someone independently, I'd look to go and use a broker or a marketplace. And the reason why you do that is because you've got some protection. Um, a lot of the websites that are on these marketplaces have already been vetted in terms of they've already been checked out, that they're legitimate, they're not, you know, bogus websites. So I would um, recommend that. I, uh, the main ones are FE International, uh, Empire Flippers, and Flipper.com. So they're all slightly different. Flipper.com is quite a, um, a big marketplace. There's a lot of websites on there um and right across to ife international which is more of a brokerage site where you're dealing with one-on-one -on -one with a broker so fewer sites for sale but probably uh the more higher end quality wise so have a look at all of those sites i'll put those links in the show notes so you can find them and, and check some out if you're looking to buy a website the key thing i would start off with is writing a brief and we've talked a fair bit about this in the last few weeks about what business model you're going to do and and what niche you're going to do you know and then uh, the size and the budget of what you can buy because i mean there's there's websites on say flipper.com that you can buy for i don't know a few thousand dollars right up to probably a few million dollars so there's a huge range and you know so you've got a budget seem, yeah but my huge concern is that why is it why are they selling you know if, yeah. if you're going to take over it sell a website or wanting to take over a website because it's doing well. Yeah, it, you need to make sure that as part of your due diligence on the website that you are asking those questions of the, of the seller. Um, and so we'll go so into- So would you do, some, uh, sorry, I'm just uh, somebody who knows nothing really about this, but would you, is the idea to buy a website that you feel you could do something to it to make it better? Um, well, no, it could be either way. It could be a website that's already earning money and you just want to um, stick with. You want it to stick with that amount of money that it's earning. Um, so you want some passive income. Yeah, passive income. Um, and then the other side of it is you might want to uh, buy a website that you know you can grow. And so it, this is what I'm talking about, this whole the business model, the niche. You know, mm -hmm. what is your aims out of this, um, you know, the, the, this whole purchase? 
Um, so you want to write yourself a brief because, you know, you go on flipper.com, there's thousands of websites. So you want to make sure that you can use their filters to go, right, well, this is my budget, boom, boom, and set that up. And that will filter out any of the websites that are above that budget or below that budget. Um, and so on and so on. Like, you know, you want to, if you're into e-commerce, you want to filter it by e-commerce. You know, you don't want to SA, a S business, which is super And should it be something that you're software. interested in if you want passive income? Or is that uh, not an issue? Well, yeah, and that's a very good point. So we've talked about, you know, um, setting up your product based on your passion and your interests and all of that sort of thing and your business model and your niche. When you're buying a website that is, and nothing's passive, nothing's completely passive. There is always stuff to do. You know, there are some websites that are more passive than others. So you might buy a website, like I'd call a passive website one that you'd have to spend one or two hours a week on. But you're still having to do stuff with it. You can't just let it sit there. Um, and so, yeah, you might. That is probably the only time when I would suggest you can go outside of that sort of your passion and your interest. You could buy a website about car tires, uh, you know, doing reviews on car tires. You know, I have no interest in car tires. And, not sure many people would, but you could do that, and it could be a little nice little earner. Um, but because well, that you're... might be a good one for somebody who works within a car business, you know. Yeah, well, that's so, true. Yeah, but I mean, I'm those. talking about your question in terms oh, of yeah, not so, being, yeah. you know, having an interest in in the thing. Yeah, you can do that for those more passive ones. I think if you're buying a website to grow it, um, you need to have a bit of an interest and a passion in, in the. And then well, so I that topic. presume some knowledge about it as well, because you, you need to know yeah. about your clientele. Yeah, some knowledge, but was, yeah, you've got to be interested in it because yeah. if you if you're so, not interested, then you're not going to you're not going to keep it for a long time, and you're not going to put the effort in that you no. need to. So, what's your interest in pests? <laughs> in pests, we've got a one of our, our websites oh, deals with pet with pests. So, um, that well, that, that is that is one of those ones. <laughs> So yeah, look, I mean that's diversifying. So the other the other side of what you're looking for is you want to diversify. So you don't want to have all of your um you know, you don't want to have all of your websites doing the same thing. You okay there? Yeah, sorry. Oh that's good. Oh, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna move on to our first tip, which is um when you see these listings on these marketplaces, you want to um go beyond what the broker or the listing says so like use your own initiative you don't want to trust just the information they're giving you but use things <laughs> what? I don't know. I've just got the giggles. oh god she's got the giggles okay yeah. so use things like the wayback machine so that's um, a, a website where you can actually go on there and look at the history of the site and so they'll they'll have in the listing how long the site's been out there but you can go on the wayback machine and have a look at when that site actually started <laughs> So I'm just going to completely ignore her and keep going because <laughs> there's absolutely no reason for to be laughing. I've got water. Yeah, sure. I don't know what it is. I think it's behavior. <laughs> God, see what I have to work with. <laughs> um, so the other the other thing you can do when you um, look at things like the Wayback Machine is you know, uh, for example, like you talked about, why is the, why is the person selling the business? Yeah. Well, one way of that I always do is <laughs> go onto their social media. You find out who the yeah. owner is, find out what their social media yeah. accounts are, and have a bit of a troll. You never know what you might actually find in there that you just go, oh, actually, I don't sort of, this doesn't fit with what the person's saying that they do or that they are or or whatever, you know. You, yeah, you and know. that's a huge advantage in this day and age, isn't it? Instagram, everyone's on Instagram, everyone's yeah. on Facebook, everyone's on yeah. all these sites. So you, yeah. you, you know, same with employers and stuff, you know. Yeah, they do that. Be yeah, so careful you're, about if, what you put out there. If you're um, uh, yeah going for a job, employers will look at you all your social media. So yeah, do the same thing with so the website. Exactly, there's a huge reference out there just to get to you know a, a vibe about something or someone. Yeah, yeah. Really instantly, really quickly. Yep. So that's that's our first tip there. Uh, once you've got some websites that you've had a look at, you've filtered down, you've got got this list of websites that's in your niche and it's, you know, it's it's in your business model that you're after, it fits in with the, in your budget, then do a short list um, 
And then what you want to do is do some due diligence on all of those. So this is what we're talking about going beyond what's just in the listing. So we've got a checklist. Uh, we actually have a couple of checklists on our website for due diligence. So jump on our website. We'll put the links in the show notes for that. Have a look. Use those checklists. They're all free to use. Um, we also uh, have started up a due diligence service because I've done due diligence on hundreds of websites over the years. And so I've got a real... Um, unique way that i've put together over the years of being able to address or assess a website. yeah and the package that blair's put together it's i mean it's really reasonable the amount of work he will put into it for you mm. for um the cost of that package is is really really good like yeah. he's you go you go above and beyond for what you yeah. know what well i mean does. it's just it's just you know we don't want you to buy a bad website and you know, it's putting together years of experience to just assess these things. And remember, if you're spending $40,000, for example, on a new website, you know, the cost of a couple of hundred bucks to get a due diligence report done by an independent party like myself, um, you know, is is priceless, really, because, it, you know, it could be the difference between you buying and wasting $40,000 on a website that isn't what it said it was. Um, you know, so just, yeah, have, yeah, have a look. Yeah, and just, just use us a little bit. Just, you know, get in touch with us. If you've got any questions or you're not sure if it's for you yeah, yeah. or whatever, then just contact us. Yeah, we're happy to um, happy to reply to you. Yeah, and, and just whether we think it's even um, something worth you doing or not yeah. and going ahead with, then please just ask us. Yeah, absolutely. So the next tip is, you know, you basically, from there, you want to act like a detective, okay? So you want to be focusing, and I know this sounds a bit negative, but you want to be looking for the bad points. You want to try and find, you know, no business is 100% perfect. So you want to find those bad points. Um, and the reason for that is because you want to be comfortable that if you're buying that website, that you can handle what those bad points are. So you need to find out what they are. A lot of the time, Funnily enough, sellers do not put all the bad points of a website that they're trying to sell in the listing because it turns people off. So it's up to you to actually do a bit well, of digging. it's like Facebook and Instagram, who puts the bad photos up? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true, yeah. If you want to look at it like that, yeah, it's no, a no, unique spin on No one advertises the bad side. They only, yeah. you know, people select the best pictures and the best bits to put up, don't they? Yeah, that's true, yeah. So... So once you've done your wee list of your websites, you've done a bit of due diligence on them, you want to then be starting and talking to the seller and the broker, if there's a broker involved, or it could just be on Flipper where it's just a marketplace. But if if it's FE International, for example, you'll be dealing directly with a broker. So really start to fine tune your questions and get down to the nitty gritty about the business. So, you know, you, you really want to be going through 40 or 50 questions with the with the seller and the broker before you reach a level which I would say would be comfortable to proceed. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that a real good tip is what other people don't understand is just because there's a price on the listing, you know, it could be $40,000 for that website, doesn't mean that that's fixed. Just because Ooh, it's written you can get down. There and a little yeah, bit, you've yeah. got to get in there, negotiate with the seller and say, look, you know, I've found out about these bad points about the business. Um, I'm happy to proceed, but I'm going to want a reduction in the price because of this. And it means that I'm going to have to deal with those bad points. So negotiate, get in there, you know, get stuck in. Um, yeah. So if you've done your research and you found these things out, then it gives you that. Um yeah, it gives you gives you that. Uh, well, I guess the list to go to them with. Yeah. You know, it yeah. gives you some ammunition to yeah. go and say, "Hey, look, we we want to negotiate on price." Yeah. Uh, so I suppose if you get um, someone like Blair to to the due do, do, how can I say it? Do the <laughs> do, due diligence. Do, the due diligence on your website. You can then use that and negotiate on the cost of the, of that website. Then and so really, yeah. you're probably then making the money back that you spent oh, on and some. And some, uh, and some yeah. uh, you know, so it is worth it for the for the for the sake of a hun a few hundred dollars to do a due diligence report by me. You will or anybody else possibly you know. get thousands of dollars of savings in the, the ability to negotiate on the price of the website. There you go. So um, there Should you go. Press yourself <laughs> <laughs> right. So the um, you know, if you've got to that point and you actually decide to proceed with the website, 
um, remember that no website is going to be perfect. So you are going to have to have and accept some of the bad points, but you've got to be able to manage those. So that's probably the point I'd make. Otherwise, you end up going in this vicious circle of doing due diligence and not accepting to buy the website, and you just keep doing that forever and ever. You've got to start somewhere. So um, once you've done that and you've you've confirmed that the purchase is going ahead, normally with the platforms or the brokers, they will have a um, they will have a handover period. Um, so make sure that that's sufficient. Normally, I would say three to six months. So that's when the previous owner is still um, able to be contacted and ask questions about the business to help you sort of hand over and get used to it. So it's a bit of sort of on on site training as such. Um, so make sure that's uh, sufficient. And the other thing is make sure that there's a non disclosure agreement um, as part of the uh, sale. So that means that the um, and a non-compete, so non-disclosure and non-compete. So that means that the uh, seller can't talk about the sale beyond it to anyone else. And the seller also, the, the non-compete period, so that's normally, oh, well, it can be one, two, three years. They can't then go and start a business exactly like the website they've just sold you for up to that three-year period. So that's a real good one to have in there. So make sure whatever contract you've got in place, um, and normally it's a buy-sell contract, um, have that non-compete period. And I would push for as long as you can with that. And again, these these contracts are negotiable. So have a read of it, get your lawyer involved, negotiate on some of those key points. Um, so just a few things to wrap up. Remember, if you're dealing with a broker, basically they're on the seller's side. So basically question everything that they tell you. They're, tr they're like a real estate agent. They're trying to sell the house for somebody. So they are going to do because they get commission for it. So they're going to do whatever they can do to sell you that website. So just bear that in mind and take everything that a broker says with a grain of salt. Um, you know, make sure that you counter check all of the data that they provide to you. So like for a revenue thing. So if you're looking at the revenues, a lot of the time they'll give you a spreadsheet saying, oh, this is what the revenues we earned in the last 12 months. What I would do is actually get them on a live Zoom call and get them to show you on their dashboard their revenue earnings. So that could be on Stripe or however they're getting that revenue in. Um, they'll have a dashboard that will prove those revenues. So I would never just accept a Excel spreadsheet because I can go and create a, an Excel spreadsheet in the next five minutes that says whatever it wants. So don't just trust the stuff they give you. Question it. Um, you know, and I think one of the key things to finish off on is that there's some really good websites out there and there are some really bad websites and there are some really bad ripoffs. So if it seems too good to be true, like for example, the, the website's earning $40,000 net profit a month. They wouldn't be selling it. Uh, they, well, so. they wouldn't be selling it for $2,000. They might be selling it for $400,000, but you know, it's yeah. better to pay a fair market price for a good and valid website than paying a cheap price for something that's sort of blown out of proportions and is just basically rubbish. Yeah. Yeah. You're um, getting what you pay for, basically, probably. You are getting what you pay for a lot of the time. There's generally, as we say, if it's too good to be true, it probably yeah. is. Yeah. Um, and again, as Emily keeps saying, question, 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 why are they selling it? You know, yeah. they always come up with this thing like, oh, yeah. I've, got I don't, a, I don't trust I've got a new venture I want to start, you know, I need the money for that. Um, I would dig deeper. I would find out what the new venture is. You know, you're in a, you're generally, when you're negotiating with these things, you, you're in a non-disclosure agreement with them. So you won't go talking about their business and you won't go, they won't go talking about yours. So get stuck in, find out why they're selling. That's yeah. the key thing. Yeah. So there's a fair bit there uh, today. Um, there's a fair few tips there to, to hopefully stop you buying a rubbish website. Yeah. Um, if you have chosen this route to buy a website rather than build one, good on you. Get stuck into the platforms that are out there, those the flipper.coms, etc. It's quite fun actually sitting down and working your way through and finding websites and quite exciting, really. So um, again, as Emily said, we're available if you want to have a chat about anything with buying a website. Yeah, any questions, just get in touch. Yep. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up or make a comment um, in the uh, under the video and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to see more of these uh, podcast videos. But um, 
as of now, that is episode 108. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye. See you guys.